Dan Murphy joins us now with more. Dan, I know you spoke to the Secretary General on many occasions over the years. Share with us what legacy he leaves behind. Well, a really big legacy, Juliana. A really sad day today, in fact, for the entire OPEC community. Small group of ministers, small group of reporters, and a small group of people on the periphery as well, all feeling this today. Tributes have been coming through on social media and on the various OPEC reporting WhatsApp groups for Secretary General Mohamed Barkindo, who has passed away age 63. We understand Mr Bakindo was in the final weeks of his tenure as Secretary General and had actually returned to Nigeria to prepare for the next phase of his life and work. We're told that he was speaking at a Nigerian oil conference only this week and actually seemed in quite good health there. So his death was very sudden and no immediate cause has been given. That's certainly adding to the shock of the news out today. The group CEO of Nigeria's national oil company, Melik Yari, actually tweeted today, we lost our esteemed Dr. Mohamed Sanusi Barkindo. He died at about 11 p.m. yesterday, the 5th of July, 2022. Certainly a great loss to his immediate family, the NNPC, our country Nigeria, the OPEC and the global energy community. It goes on to say burial arrangements will be announced shortly. The OPEC secretariat has also released a statement, it too tweeting, he was a much-loved leader of the OPEC Secretariat and his passing is a profound loss to the entire OPEC family, the oil industry and the international community. Of course, looking back on his legacy, Mr Barkindo has been one of the most important figures in energy in recent years and he was, personally speaking, a very fun character. He was a statesman with a real sense of humour and he bought a statesmanship to his role as Secretary General. He certainly very skillfully navigated some incredible challenges for OPEC in recent years, including the bombings at Abqaiq in Saudi Arabia, the COVID crisis that saw oil prices turn negative in 2020, and also the crisis of cohesion within the group at the onset of the pandemic, fractures between Saudi Arabia and Russia that he was able to expertly navigate and also really credited with bringing the organisation together, enlarging the organisation and adding the credibility and gravitas to the organisation that made it such a powerful geopolitical player here. Um, of course, we also saw him navigating major disruptions resulting from the war in Ukraine. And more recently, he also turned his hand to addressing the challenge of climate change, which was something that the organisation was also focusing on moving forward. So this is a very significant loss today and uh, he will be missed definitely at the conferences that we attend, uh, at all of the OPEC meetings that we've been to. I know personally, uh, I recalled earlier how I fondly remember walking with him, um, chasing him down the corridors of the uh, OPEC headquarters in Vienna or meeting him at conferences in Saudi Arabia, uh, in Azerbaijan, in Egypt, in the UAE and everywhere else that he traveled for his work in the oil and energy markets. Uh, this is a very big loss for uh, the people who were very close to him and he will be greatly missed. So our deepest condolences to his family and to the OPEC reporting community on the loss of Mohamed Bakindo today. It's back over to you. Dan, thank you so much for the powerful uh, summary of um, what his life has meant to the community. Uh, thank you so much for bringing us that, Dan. For more on this story, you can visit CNBC.com.